Hello and welcome to Showcase, I'm Nafisa Abdelal. On today's episode, we are going to delve into the creative industry where a young innovative mind takes us through the process of animation filmmaking. Do stay with us. While it's unclear when and where animation first came to life, the concept of storytelling has been around for centuries. From shadow puppetry in about 200 AD to the magic lantern in the 1650s, the first real image projector telling a story through motion has been happening forever. But it was in 1832 when the Finakistico was invented by Joseph Plato that the first widespread animation device came into place. Using the persistence of vision principle, it created a fluent illusion of motion. When multiple images blend into a single moving image in the brain, it's called persistence of vision. In 1834, William George Horner created a similar motion picture projector, putting the drawings inside of a drum that turned in a circular fashion. This was one of the biggest innovations that laid the foundation for projecting film. Horner originally named it the Deidatilum, or Wheel of the Devil. But French inventor Pierre Devine renamed his own version after the Greek word for things that turn. These early feats of animated motion carved out the path for the animated movies we know today. Animation is a method of photographing successive drawings, models, or even puppets to create an illusion of movement in a sequence. Because our eyes can only retain an image for approximately one tenth of a second, when multiple images appear in fast succession, the brain blends them into a single moving image. In traditional animation, pictures are drawn or painted on transparent celluloid sheets to be photographed. Early cartoons are examples of this. But today, most animated movies are made with computer-generated imagery, or CGI. The different types of animation include traditional animation, 2D animation, 3D animation, motion graphics, and stop motion. I got into animation as a result of passion, result of um, the love for multimedia generally. When I was much younger, I always uh, wondered how cartoons are made. So I thought about um, going into that field so I can understand the dynamics. So I went into that because of my passion, like I said. So um, then I discovered there's more to animation and it has a lot of applications. So I ventured fully into it as a career. What I study in school, doesn't relate to what I'm doing now. In fact, I studied geology from the University of Medigree and um, it has nothing to do with um, animation now, except you, want, you have a geological story you want to share, but um, it has no direct link to what I do. I started it as a passion and love for multimedia, then I turned, converted it into business. Um, animation is significant to me because it has given me a lot of opportunities to um, meet um, different uh, animators all around the world. I've also had opportunity to make um, some good resources for myself and my family. And it has also given me recognition uh, from the awards and um, international awards I've gotten. So it has been a personal and also uh, on a professional level too. It has benefited me. Animation is basically um, the creation of um, objects, giving life to inanimate objects. So it can be um, anything you can, you can animate, we can animate practically anything. From books, humans, tables, houses. Basically the idea is just to create these objects and give them life. So to do whatever you want them to do based on your script. So that is basically animation. 
animation works as a business um, in terms of um, content creation, in terms of um, um, now looking at application of animation. So uh, we could also look at it as a part of um, solving advertorial problems. We could use animations to create adverts, promote businesses. We could also use animation for uh, crime prevention. The police use animation to determine the um, direction of bullets and all that. We also use animation in terms of um, agriculture. We use animation in medicine too seeing how um, drugs react to the human body using animations to describe the effects of drugs on the body. So it's quite broad. The creative industry is broad and um, it's quite um, dynamic too in terms of um, what the clients or the audience would love to see. You know, when you talk about creativity, it has to do with you being able to produce something from nothing, practically, being innovative. It's very vital in the um, entertainment industry because it's a way of um, empowering people, getting um, jobs, creating jobs for people, and uh, it has an overall impact on the society and the economic situation of every country. Because and the uh, entertainment industry has to do with young people, so they create um, value in terms of content and they promote on different platforms. Businesses key into that to create their adverts. So it's, it's quite uh, important in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the economy of a country. They decided to name the lake Lake Kabula, which means our water as a sign of a new beginning. Uh, basically to start um, animation as a business, you practically need to look at, um, you, have, you need to have a creative mind. Secondly, you look at the infrastructure, office space, equipment you need to get. Infrastructure, like I said, basically is one of the key factors because once you have your equipment, you don't have um, constant power, it's a challenge. So you need to have the infrastructure in terms of power available for you to create, explore, and um, serve your clients. My journey as an animator has been challenging and also rewarding. Challenging in the sense that um, it's normal with every business. When you start, there are a lot of challenges in terms of getting to understand the structure of the business, how it operates, and how you can make profit from it. Um, when I started the animation in 2005, there were very little um, documents, tutorials, and materials for you to key into, to read, to understand the dynamics of animation. But now, with the invent of the internet, how accessible it is, we have a lot of materials online. It is promising and it is, um, it is broad. You can go into entertainment aspect of animation that has to do with creating videos, entertainment videos, uh, entertaining videos for musicians, you can also create um, uh, documentaries using animation, you can also tell stories. Um, animation is broad, there's a lot of potential in animation when it has to do with application of animation. Um, in terms of uh, music production, shooting musical videos, um, you can use animations to tell stories, you can use animations to do adverts for companies especially now in the economic situation that the country, but we have um, the exchange rates and also the pandemic now. A lot of companies that are not um, so, they are not into production. So as an animator, you could create adverts for those companies, so-called small to medium companies. You could produce um, short jingles for them to advertise their businesses. You could also, um, you could also produce um, short movies you know, you could produce, um, go into competition, you can go into film festivals, submit your entries, and there are a lot of opportunities in terms of monetary values, recognition that you can get out of these festivals. So opportunities are broad. Um, the challenges are um, power in terms of um, stable power, high cost of equipment, and um, having availability of office space and all that.
Um, my biggest achievement as an animator um, came in 2020 when I got uh, an award from Targo International Film Festival. They um, created a platform for animators to submit their entries. So I created a short movie, animated movie, for um, regarding the 2019 to 2020 uh, bushfires in America. So I submitted that film and um, under the category of um, nature, wildlife, and the environment. The, uh, the animation won the most outstanding best animation in that category. So that gave me the opportunity to interact with the international community in terms of uh, my field as an animator and also when I'm as an environmentalist, talking about how to curb global, uh, global climate change and global warming. So um, it has been a wonderful experience and it has given me opportunity to network with not just animators within Nigeria, animators all over the world and um, also um, monetary value. So um, there are a lot of um, festivals that um, award in terms of cash, cash prizes. So um, I've gotten quite a lot from that uh, aspect too. So it has been wonderful. Okay, the materials I use for my production, basically, number one is um, having a perfect state of mind, having a creative mind. That can be achieved by getting inspiration online. You could go online, look at other materials, innovate, think about how you can better the idea or um, get something brand new. Uh, other materials you need, um, having a functional system, have um, um, a tablet where you could use to draw draw your sketches and characters you and um, yeah basically these are just a few the things you need a tablet a computer your drawing board and um, having constant steady power and basically a creative mind to back it up animation is a lucrative business because um, you have the opportunity to deal with clients not within Nigeria or within your locality. You could have clients uh, that will pay you in foreign currencies as in foreign exchange. It's very, very lucrative. Um, and you could also deal with um, local companies, um, businesses that want to do adverts. So um, a good job a good from a good client can fetch you a resource that, uh, fetch you resources that can be uh, much more than your investment in terms of uh, what you put in to start a studio, so uh, it can be it can be creative, it can be lucrative in the sense that you have um, clients, basically clients. Uh, animation is um, appreciated in Nigeria. It's just the the problem is um, getting to get the equivalent uh, value in terms of monetary returns for it. So uh, I kept mentioning clients overseas because those, they value animation, they pay for the value. Uh, Nigerians appreciate good things. So um, it's beginning to come up. People are beginning to appreciate animators more. People are beginning to come into the industry, invest in the industry. And um, I believe within a couple of years, uh, we have um, all our content consumed in Nigeria, not just abroad. One of the greatest feedbacks we got from our, from a client is um, recently we did a short promotional video for for a hotel here in Abuja. Um, this the hotel has been struggling with clients getting customers and all that. So they contacted us. We created a short advert for them, and we gave them almost uh, free, and they publish that on their so platform, social media platforms and other promotional platforms. And the response they got from that short clip, now up to 30 seconds advert, was mind-blowing. They got clients from different parts of Abuja. So the manager called and was thinking we used, the, let me quote Juju for him, for that project. But it all boils down to how creative and how the approach you want to adopt in the advert. 
So the, it has been awesome. They've been appreciating what we've done, the team. And it's always thank you, thank you, thank you. How can we do more? Yeah, and referral too from them. So it has been, it has been awesome. The most challenging part of animation is um, getting the clients that are willing to pay um, the amount you want them to pay in terms of the value you are giving them. Um, yeah, and for me, and I, as a studio in Abuja, we have a challenge of um, getting clients because um, most times they feel all uh, production houses need to be um, produce their advert from Lagos and outside the country. But I, but I know Abuja has a lot of entrepreneurs that are into production, animation, multimedia and all that. So getting to convince clients to key into um, companies and studios in Abuja to have faith in them and give them a chance to produce adverts for them and has been a challenge. But uh, things are beginning to change now. People now know that you can produce whatever content you want at any part in any part of the world. So um, that's the major challenge, getting the right client that would pay for the value you are giving. The unemployment rate is quite high. And I want to say that uh, the government are trying. The government is trying, and the government can't do it alone. Uh, despite the fact that um, we have a lot of youth that are uh, roaming the street looking for job opportunities, um, for me, I would love to venture into my um, animation field because um, of uh, the opportunity there. It gives me opportunity to be independent, to have um, to generate income for myself and also to be an employer of labor. Empower people so they can get, employ people and by that we'll have uh, more people engaged and um, employment issue will be a thing of the past. My advice for entrepreneurs, young animators, is for them to look inwards. They should look for low hanging fruits they should reach out for reach out to clients that are not um, big in terms of structure and potential. They should provide high quality service, and they should also make use of technology, because this um, looking at the current situation, the pandemic, uh, you ha can have clients. You don't have to meet a client, travel down to various um, location to get your clients. You could take advantage of the technology and reach out to them, have meetings online, and. Um, be creative and also stop learning, keep learning, learning and learning. We have come to the end of this episode on Showcase. As usual, we hope you found it interesting and inspiring. We'll be back next week with another mind-blowing package. I'm Nefisa Abdelal. Thank you for watching.